Cristo vive, Cristo vive para siempre su misericordia. Amén. Bienvenidos a la casa del Señor en esta mañana. Praise the Lord. Jesus lives. Amen. Welcome to Calvary Baptist Church. Vamos a leer el Salmo 147, hermanos y hermanas. We're going to read out Psalms 147. I'm going to ask everybody to go off the stand, please. Amén. Gloria a Dios. Digan un amén, hermanos. Dice la palabra de Dios así, alabad a Jehová, porque es bueno cantar salmos a nuestro Dios, porque suave y hermosa es la alabanza. Jehová edifica a Jerusalén y a los desterrados de Israel recogerá, y sana a los quebrantados de corazón y venda sus heridas, y cuenta el número de las estrellas y todas ellas llama por su nombre. Grande es el Señor nuestro, y de mucho poder, y su entendimiento es infinito. Gloria a Dios. Palabra del Señor. The word of God says, Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God, for it is pleasant and praise and beautiful. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers together the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted, He blinds up the wounds. He counts the number of the stars. He calls them by name. Great is the Lord and mighty in power and, uh, and understanding is infinite. Amen. 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 Praise Glory the Lord. To Dios. Así invocamos el nombre del Señor esta mañana, hermanos. Incline su rostro, por favor. Let's pray. Te damos gracias, Dios. We want to give you thanks, Lord. Bendito Padre Celestial. Heavenly Father. Entramos a tu presencia en el nombre de Jesús. We come into your presence in the name of Jesus. Nos dirigimos a adorarte, Señor. We want to worship you, Lord. Con tu pueblo en esta mañana. With your people this morning. Así es que recibe nuestra adoración, por favor. And receive our worship this morning, Father God. Y gracias, Señor, por la vida y la salud que nos brindas. And we thank you, Lord, for our life and our health. Tu nombre sea glorificado en cada rincón de esta tierra. And that your name of the Lord will be praised around the world. Gracias, Señor. Thank you, Father. En el nombre de Jesús. In the name of Jesus. Amén y amén. Amen. Gloria a Dios, hermano Isaac. Así empezamos a adorar al Señor en esta mañana. Amén, hermanos. Let's worship the Lord. Amen. That's what he's in the
porque el hombre que miraría a Dios perecería, mor moriría pero un día lo vamos a ver cara a cara Amen, hermanos
Gloria a ti, Señor. Gloria a tu precioso nombre. Dice tu palabra que tú cuentas las estrellas cada uno por su nombre, Señor. Eres un Dios poderoso, grande, Señor. Bendito seas hoy y siempre. Bendice a cada uno de mis hermanos en esta mañana, Señor. Gracias por los hermanos de Rubén que ya está con nosotros. El Señor se está estableciendo. Bendito sea tu nombre. Y cada uno de mis hermanos y hermanas que están sanando sus heridas, sanando, Señor, su cuerpo. Bendito seas tú hoy y siempre. Gracias, Señor. Thank you, Lord. Por permitirnos adorarte en esta mañana. Allowing us to worship you this morning. Gracias, gracias en el nombre de Jesús. Thank you. We thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hermanos, toma asiento, hermanos. Gloria a Dios. Sí, please. Well, God bless you. What a pleasure and what a blessing it is to be able to worship with you. I want to thank all of you for your prayers and your support. Thank you for tuning in and making sure that uh, we get uh, God's word for today. Now, those of you who've been following our messages in recent weeks know that we're talking about building character. We're talking about building character. You know, God loves you just the way you are, but he loves you too much to leave you that way. And his ultimate goal is to help you become more like Christ. Now, the, the sophisticated word for this process is a word we call sanctification. And throughout Scripture, Christians are encouraged to become more like Christ. 2 Corinthians 3.18, for example, says, As God's Spirit works within us, we are being transformed to become more like Christ. This change from one degree of glory to another comes from the Lord. And last time, to open the series, we spent a great deal of time talking about how God does this. It's His Holy Spirit who does the work in us. But there are certain things that you and I must also be willing to do. And the first thing we must do is to yield to the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit do His work inside of us. And I mentioned a few reasons why making this happen and allowing the Holy Spirit to do His work in us is so hard. One of the reasons is because it's hard to change something that we've been for so long. Personal defects. Personal defects are hard to change because we've had them so long. They're also hard to change because we come to identify with them because every defect has a payoff. There's a reward for the way that you do certain things. And remember, whatever is being repeated is being rewarded. And of course, the other reason is because Satan fights the process. He doesn't want us to change. He doesn't want us to become ultimately what God wants you and I to become. So what does it take for this real change to happen? And this is what I want to focus the next few messages on. Now that we understand that God is preparing us for our our home in heaven. He's preparing us for eternal life in heaven. He wants to build that character in us. He doesn't want to leave us the way he found us. He wants to make us more like Christ. Now that we understand the process, I want us to take a deeper dive into what this process involves. And the first thing I want to talk to you about today is that real change, real change begins with new thinking. We're going to base today's message on Ephesians chapter 4. In fact, it'll be the basis for today's message and the next few messages in the series. Because in Ephesians chapter 4, we will read about the things that need to happen in order for these hard changes, these difficult changes to be had. Let's have a word of prayer. We thank you, God, for this time that we can spend in your word. I pray that you would use this message to edify us 
uh, to encourage us and to help us to become the person you envision us to be, to be more like Christ-like, to uh, allow the transformation you want to do in us to take place. And I pray that you would use today's message to encourage us down that process and help us, Lord, let you and your Holy Spirit do your work in us. And I pray for all those who are watching, who are willing to make these hard changes, that you give them the strength and encouragement they need to allow these changes to take place in their lives. Because ultimately, Lord, we want to please you by becoming who you want us to become. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4 tells us that there are six elements that God uses to effect this change in our lives. And the first one begins with new thinking. New thinking. Your thoughts, my thoughts, affect how we feel. And our feelings affect our attitudes, they affect our behaviors, they affect our actions. And so often, we find ourselves doing things that we in our hearts believe are not the right things we ought to be doing, and we focus so much of our attention on changing the actions, on changing the behaviors. But we have to understand that our actions and behaviors actually are the fruit and the product of our feelings, which are driven and triggered by our thoughts. In fact, Ephesians 4.23 says this, there must be a spiritual renewal of your thoughts and attitudes. There must be a spiritual renewal of your thoughts and your attitudes. You've heard the expression that you are what you think. And it's absolutely true. You are the product of your thoughts. What you ultimately think, what you ultimately believe, what you ultimately, your attitudes, your actions, your behaviors are all products of the thoughts that you allow to germinate and to uh, take hold in your mind. And the spiritual battle is the battle in your mind. I recall the Apostle Paul sharing from his own experience how it is that there are sometimes he finds himself, he gets so frustrated because he ends up doing things he knows he shouldn't be doing. And he ends up doing things that he knows he shouldn't be doing. And how often have you and I not caught ourselves in the same situation? where we just did something and we say to ourselves, I shouldn't have done that. Or we had an opportunity to do something and we say to ourselves, I should have done it. And this battle of your minds is the reason why we start today's message with this. If you want real change to take hold in your life, if you want to build the character that you need in heaven, you need to begin with new thinking. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 17 and 19 says this, Don't keep living as the ungodly do, for they are hopelessly confused in their thinking. Their closed minds are full of darkness. They're far away from the life God gives because they have shut their minds and hardened their hearts against Him. They don't care anymore about right and wrong and they're indulged themselves in all kinds of immorality evil thinking, and the constant desire for more. These verses speak of the condition of those without Christ. Those whose minds have not been renewed by the Holy Spirit of God. And this is why it's so important that we recognize that if we want God to transform us, we've got to let Him start with our thoughts. Because it's in our minds that the spiritual battle is waged. And if we want to make real change to take effect in our lives, we've got to start with our thoughts. It's our thoughts who determine our feelings and our attitudes that in turn inform our activities, our actions, our behaviors. Paul says to the Ephesians, don't keep living as the ungodly do. In other words, if you are serious about getting, letting God transform you, You've got to quit thinking the way the world does. And you've got to start thinking the way that Christ does. Remember, God's ultimate goal is to make you more like Christ. And that means that God wants you to think like Christ. He says of those in the world, for they are hopelessly confused in their thinking. Their closed minds are full of darkness. 
They're far away from the life that God gives because they have shut their minds and hardened their hearts against Him. And this is exactly why God is so interested in changing your thoughts, changing the way that you think. It's about rethinking your life because that's the basis for Him to affect these changes in your life. Now, another way to describe this, and another verse in the Bible that describes this process, is found in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. In Romans 12, 2, Paul says, Do not conform to the values and opinions of this world. Instead, let God transform you by teaching you the right and true way to think. In other words, what Paul is saying is that if you want to be transformed, you cannot be conformed. You cannot conform to the patterns of the world and expect to be transformed. The two are diametrically opposed. If you want to let God transform you, then you have to do your part to make sure you're not conforming to the patterns of the world. That's why he says, do not conform to the values and opinions of this world, but instead let God transform you by teaching you the right and true way to think. You must let the Spirit do His work in you, but you must also do your part so that you're not conforming. And this is so important. If you go back to Ephesians 4.23, it says, Let the Spirit change your way of thinking. Let the Spirit change the way of thinking. So the best first step to change in your life is to change the way that you think. Because from your mind, all activities, all attitudes, all behaviors will be directed. And if you can let God change your mind, if you let the Holy Spirit of God do His work in you, and you focus on letting God change your thoughts and the way that you think, that will set you on that path that you need to be on to let God transform you. Now, if you want to be transformed, you cannot be conformed. You also need the truth to be transformed. So it's not just about saying, God, I'm not going to conform. I'm going to let you transform me. Well, you need God's truth to do the transforming in you. And this is the truth that enables your thinking to be thinking that is in alignment with God, his values, and his truths. We all know the classic verse, John 17, 17. Use the truth to make them complete. Your word is truth. God's word is truth. So here's the second element that God uses to transform us. The first is real change begins with new thinking. Where God renews your mind. He renews your thinking. The second element is real change requires learning the truth. God's truth. You know, we live in a world of false truths, fake news. And it's interesting when you think about the terminology that we use to describe all of these things, because the truth in and of itself is truth, should should be truthful. But the truth that we need and the truth that we need to learn to see that change in our lives is the truth of God. And it's the truth that Jesus speaks of when he says, use the truth to make them complete. Your word is truth. Now, going back to Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4 verses 14 and 15 says this, then we will no longer be like children, forever changing our minds about what we believe because someone has told us something different or made a lie sound like truth. Instead, we will hold to the truth in love, becoming more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. It's interesting that Paul compares us to children. He says, we will no longer be like children. And how are children? What are the attributes of children? He says, forever changing their minds about what they believe because someone has told them something different or made a lie sound like the truth. Children, by their very nature, can be very gullible. And in their innocence, may believe lies that are disguised as truths. And so Paul is saying we have to mature, we have to grow 
up and not be like children. Instead, we need to hold to the truth in love, becoming more and more like Christ. And so here's the reason why learning the truth is so important. When you learn the truth, when you discover God's truth, not only will you find the truth, but you will then be able to detect anything that is not the truth. But until and unless you learn the truth of God, anything that has any semblance of truth or any sprinkling of truth in it, you may find confusing. And this is why it's so important. Real change requires learning the truth. And learning the truth becomes an important companion to your new thinking. This is why it's so important in, four, in, in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 21. says, since you have heard all about him, you have learned the truth that is in Jesus. You know, behind every self-defeating behavior, there's a lie that you're believing. Just because you think something doesn't mean it's real. It doesn't mean it's true. And as long as you understand that the mind is a battlefield, the spiritual battlefield, the only way to make sure that your thoughts are governed by truth is to know the truth. It's to learn the truth. And as Jesus said, the truth shall set you free. Until you find the truth and you know the truth and learn the truth, you will be in this, in this um, arena of confusion because you won't know where that truth is or what is coming at you, whether it's truth or falsehood. This is why it's so important to immerse yourself in the Word, to immerse yourself in the Word of God, and to make sure you understand that. Let me give you an example. You know, these days it's, it's very common to find food products at the grocery store that look like the real stuff. In fact, they may taste like the real stuff. They may smell like the real stuff. But when you look at the ingredients and when you look at what this stuff is made of, you realize and you come and discover that it's not the real thing, which means that it may smell like the real thing. It may look like the real thing. It may even taste like the real thing. But because it's not the real thing, it's not giving you the nutrients that your body needs. Let's take, for example, cheese. <laughs> there, there is cheese and then there is cheese product. Cheese product looks like cheese, it smells like cheese, it tastes like cheese, but it's not 100% authentic cheese. So it doesn't have all the nutrients that real cheese and only real cheese can produce. Well, in the same way, when you want to grow spiritually, and you want to let the Holy Spirit of God transform you so that you become more like Christ. And in the process, start uh, assimilating yourself to the character that we're going to need in heaven to become more like Christ. We need to make sure that what we are feeding our soul is the true, authentic word of God. That it's the truth. Anything that falls short of that will never be able to give you that spiritual nutrition you need to keep growing and to keep getting closer to God. Friends, this is why it's so important that every single day we feast on God's Word. That we make it a priority each and every day to read from God's Word. To spend time in God's Word. To learn from God's Word. And to make sure that we're feeding our souls. That's going to be an important essential ingredient as we, we move forward. And we let the Holy Spirit of God do His work in us. So today... We talked about two important elements that are part of our transformation. This is God building the character he wants to see in us that we're going to need in heaven. And remember, this process of him making us more like Christ is to get us to that ultimate vision of this character that he wants to see in us. And the two elements that we need today, two of several elements we read about in Ephesians chapter 4 are this. Real change begins with new thinking. Change the way you think. Change your thoughts. And the second is real change requires learning the truth. Knowing the truth. Growing in truth and learning the truth become key steps that you and I can take each and every day to get close to God 
and to make sure that we are feasting and we are feeding our souls the Word of God. Well, I encourage all of you to get into the Word each day and make sure you're doing your part to make sure that you are growing, you're feeding your soul, and you're growing spiritual. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for uh, this message and for uh, showing us, Lord, how we can grow and how we can allow you to transform us into the people you want us to become. Ultimately, your goal is for us to become more like Christ. And this process requires certain elements to take hold. And today we learned about uh, changing the way that we think and learning the truth. The two go hand in hand. They're important for our, for our minds to be able to detect truth and to be able to detect falsehood and how important it is to feed our, our, our souls, but also our minds, the truth of scripture so that we can let your Holy Spirit do his work in us. And so, Lord, I pray that each of us will see and find and feel a desire to get into your word each and every day to make sure that we are uh, receiving the spiritual nutrition we need to keep growing and to keep getting closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Amen. Well, God bless you all. We'll see you next time again in this series, Building Character. God bless you all.